Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can see me and if you can hear me, please. Yes, we can. Nice. Hello, everybody. <laughs> wow. Wow. Look at all you. This is amazing. It's been such a long time since I've streamed. I feel like it's been forever. It's really nice to interact. And uh, it's not just an unboxing. We, I've got these three just like a couple hours ago, but I also want to get some opinions from you folks. First of all, we're going to start with a quick poll. I got three machines here. We're not going to unbox uh, <clears throat> all three of these, but let me do a quick poll here. <clears throat> and you can vote which one to unbox. So there's three MacBook Pros here. Uh, an M3 base model, M3 Pro, and an M3 Max, and uh, that's it. But I'm going to give you another option. <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> Can you see the poll? I don't think I've ever done the poll before, so we'll see. <clears throat> Bruno San Martin, welcome, uh, a new member to the channel. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Wow, I'm seeing some familiar names here. This is really nice to see everybody back. I know it's all kinds of different times around the world. Uh, I do have videos coming on these things shortly. So if you can't make it to the stream or if you can only make it for five minutes. So this is not it. This is going to be like just hello, hello. How are you guys? Unboxing. We may do like a quick benchmark that doesn't require installation of a lot of software. Um, and yeah. And then we're going to have more videos coming up soon <clears throat> wow how do i see the results of this poll m3 pro that is actually a surprise to me that people are mostly voting for the m3 pro <clears throat> yeah i thought uh i didn't think that was going to be a very popular model but hey if you want to see that one we'll see that one I just got to figure out which box it is. Um, by the way, do you know how many different SKUs there are for these MacBooks? Take a guess. Guess how many different combinations of all these machines Apple has today on their website. It's uh, I went and I went through it. I checked it out and it's a lot. <clears throat> 420. <laughs> 20. Uh, one is too much, 420 is too much, 20 is too little. 1,000 is too much, 621, no, no, no. Nobody's close. Well, there's somebody's the closest, right? But All right, so far Prashant Nigam is the closest with 99, but it's actually, I think it's about 80. So if we're being... If we're being facetious, 69 would have been the closest by Daniel Constantine. Thank you, Joshua. I appreciate that. Can you do an LLM test of Llama and or Code Llama? You know what? This is one of the things we're going to be doing right now is I'm going to be taking notes and jotting down the things that you want to see uh, from these machines because I'm going to be straight up with you right now. <clears throat> Here we go. In my opinion, the best MacBook that you can get in 2023 is this one. Can you see that? Best bang for the buck is still the M1 MacBook Air. 16 gigabytes. So, 
I said I was going to be straight up with you, and I and I am going to be because I don't think that most people that already have anything that's Apple Silicon should upgrade to any of these machines. The only reasons why you would is if you're doing things like, um, like what Joshua just mentioned. If you're going to be doing machine learning, if you're going to be doing game development. So Joshua, I'm going to put your LLM test as the first thing on my list to test. Uh, because I know a lot of people are interested in that and specifically the bigger, bigger processors like the M3 Max. There's going to be people using the M3 Pro that are going to be uh, doing some machine learning stuff. <clears throat> so um, how should we do this? I think maybe I will, maybe I'll create an Excel sheet and uh, I'll post it either to this live or as a, as a community post that you can go in and vote for things that you want to see. Otherwise, if you are here during the live stream right now, you can kind of throw in, um, throw in your ideas here. So people are still voting for unity. Uh, that's interesting. Okay. Unity, unity has been some of the more popular tests on the channel. <clears throat> All right. Flutter and Unity would be great. M2 Max versus M3 Max. Yes, Abdul says M2 Max versus M3 Max. Absolutely. Um, I do have that planned. Okay, Juan Juan says, I do ML and yesterday I bought M1 Max MacBook Pro with 64 gigs of RAM and two terabytes. For twenty two hundred dollars, that's a that's a pretty good deal. M1 Max is a beast. In fact, you you might have noticed that I have not made a video about my M2 Max since I got it. This whole year, uh, I got it I think in January, and I just I, I made a video. Uh, I started a video saying, "What's the point?" <laughs> <laughs> and then I decided never to make that video because there really isn't any point in going from N1 Max to M2 Max. I didn't see much of a difference except I spent $1,000 more and lost $1,000 in the, in the uh, interim. Uh, but uh, I did sell my M1 Max MacBook Pro for $3,000. So I think that was pretty good. And whoever got it did get a good deal. Now you can get it a lot cheaper. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, I wish blog. That's not your real name. I know it's not. But TensorFlow test on M3 Max versus M2 Max, I will try. However, I do have to say that um, uh, somebody that um, uh, that I've been, uh, his name is Peter Lin, I've been talking to him. He's, he's, a, he's on the channel quite a lot. Uh, he's not on the channel, but he was on the channel in one video, but he ch chats to me on email. And he uh, has some good insights because he does machine learning specifically on the Apple Silicon machines. And he's been having some trouble with TensorFlow, with the latest TensorFlow on the M2 Max machine or the M2 Ultra machine. And uh, I'll, I will test it out. I'll bring you an update. But his initial thought was that Apple is making it difficult to run TensorFlow on M2 and under because they want you to upgrade to M3. Something changed in their, in their library. I'll have to do more conclusive tests, but just a warning about that. <clears throat> all right. Let's see, folks. What are you all saying here? People want to see versus 4090, the RTX 4090. You know, uh, I've done that comparison before on the channel, and... Uh, it's it's always kind of an unfair fight because uh, if you're doing things that ha that are geared for CUDA, they're always going to do much better on the RTX machine on the RTX based um, boards. So it's it's not always a fair fight. There are instances where I guess you could um, you could compare it maybe with PyTorch or with uh, 
or with TensorFlow that's not geared for CUDA. Some libraries are not configured for that, and maybe that would be a good one to do. If you have any specific libraries, let me know. All right. Okay, okay. Ram says, Wans Wans, did you get the deal at B&H, the Space Gray version? So, yeah, um, maybe Wan Wan can answer that. Cool, cool. All right, let's do this. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. We're going to be doing the M3 Pro. And I think it's this one on top. The model numbers are the only thing I can see from this box. So let's do that one. The other ones I'll unbox uh, separately. Ugh. All right. What do we have here? <clears throat> S Chassis Weekly, by the way, says test gaming performance with crossover. Um, you know, just a quick note about that. Andrew Tsai on YouTube, he does specifically gaming comparisons with crossover, with parallels. That would be a really good channel to check out. I haven't done any crossover yet. I may do it. I don't know yet, but mostly I do developer focused stuff here. So, but definitely check out Andrew Tsai's channel. Thank you so much, uh, Giacomo. That's amazing. Wow. I uh, really appreciate that. Uh, always great content. Thank you. Uh, okay. Let's do it. How do we do this? Uh, let's go to a close up. I know, I know. Unboxings are cheesy. What are you going to do? Ah. Yet it still brings me joy and excitement to take a new thing out of a box. I hope it's okay. David, thank you so much. Compare the M3 Pro versus the M1 Max and the M1 Pro. Hmm. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> you see, I don't have the uh, M1 Max anymore. I sold mine. And I don't have the M1 Pro anymore. I sold that too. But uh, I guess if enough people want to see that, I could procure one again. I think that might be an interesting test, actually. So uh, we'll have to see about that. Let's continue. We've got these tabs. There's one. There's the other one. Okay, just to make sure, MacBook Pro 14. Uh, 18 gigabytes unified memory. 512 gigabyte SSD. Seems like the right one. Okay, Joshua says, my M, thank you again, Joshua, by the way, my M1 Max 14.2 two can run llama 65 billion quantized huh yeah i think i did uh i did that test on the uh i did that test with a 70 billion one i don't think i tried the 65 billion one and it did work it did work pretty well all right i'm gonna take that note down just uh so I have an idea. Llama 65 billion quantized. Okay, top of the box, same as usual. I don't feel any difference in the, in the, I'm just kidding. Let's keep going. So what do we got here? We got a 14 inch machine. You know I love the 16 inch, that's always near and dear to my heart, but the 14 inch does have some advantages. It is very compact, it's kind of nice. Uh, I, right away I'm noticing there is no fingerprints, which is kind of nice. You get the black cable, but you get a white plug. <laughs> Good choice, Apple. I mean, there is something to be said about a white plug, right? 
if you have a black plug and you're in an office and you got to go down to uh, to the surge protector, mine happens to be black and it's a dark corner. I don't work with all these lights on normally. Uh, normally I have, when I'm working, I actually, my office doesn't look like this at all. My office looks like this when I'm working. <laughs> Can you still see me? Did I turn off too much stuff? I hope not. Let's get this stuff back. All right. So in the dark, you probably wouldn't be able to see this on the floor. I wouldn't be. I'm getting old. So this is actually not bad. And I don't care what color the thing is, to be honest with you. If the, if the cable was white too, I wouldn't care. <clears throat> Box. All right, here's the machine. So let's, uh, let's take a look at it compared to the MacBook Air right away. Where's, where's my camera? Here we go. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna line it up here. You can see the difference here. It's about a quarter of an inch bigger than the MacBook Air. And this is the 13 inch MacBook Air, so it's a smaller one. And a quarter, it's about uh, maybe a quarter inch on this side, quarter inch on this side. And the thickness, it's actually quite a bit difference there in the thickness and of course on the back it says macbook pro but the other thing to notice is here is my macbook air and you can see maybe you can see i don't know but as soon as i touch it i get fingerprints on this thing pretty easily here no, they did a good job with this. The Apple sticker, eh, no. The Apple logo still gets fingerprints. I don't think they put the coating on there, but maybe they did, it's not as bad. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Pratik Argwal says, can you please stress test of the M3 Pro Xcode simulator, Android emulator? You know what? Um, I will be doing that, but I also wanted to ask you something else. I wanted to ask you, what's this here? Oh, Bill, Bill Kravosky says, thanks, Alex. Thank you, Bill, appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to ask you, actually, Uh, about who here uses Vision Pro and develops Vision Pro and who actually has the thing? Does anybody actually have the Vision Pro headset? Because, you know, I, I build mobile apps, sure, uh, but I've never built an actual app for Vision Pro and I'm curious to see if anybody wants to see any of that. In the meantime, Let's pop this baby open and see what's going on here. All right. S Chassis Weekly says, Primogen reaction to your static overflow video? Is that like do you want me to react to Primogen's reaction? Is that what you're saying? I'm not sure what you mean by that. I thought it was good. I liked uh, I like his videos. I like Primogen's channel. It's, it's a lot of fun. Oops, sorry about that. I just hit the mic with my head. Ugh. Let's set this up real quick. And maybe we'll even do a quick test. Before uh, I keep going, does anybody... <laughs> yeah, double reaction. That's funny. Justin is picking his up today. Congrats. Uh, does anybody uh, want to know anything else about the box? <laughs> Since this is an unboxing, uh, anything else about the box? Or it's pretty self-explanatory? Let me know. Here we go. Uh, not now. Wi-Fi network, yes, but I can't show you that because it's my secret password. Oops, I hope I typed it right. 
I also just went for a run, so I'm a little sweaty. What? Come on. Did somebody change my password? <laughs> there we go. Come on, come on, log in. Okay, good. So usually I use Migration Assistant to go from one Mac to another so that my development environments are all the same. But today I'm gonna to skip that. Sign in with Apple, set up later. I'm gonna skip it because we wanna to get to the meat and do some kind of test, something like maybe, uh, I don't know, speedometer. Agree, Com create a computer account, sure. You want more information? Okay. Don't copy my password, people. <laughs> okay, it's setting up stuff. Uh, let's see. David Contreras says, thank you, David. I appreciate that a lot. Do you recommend M3 Pro or M1 Pro Max to purchase? <laughs> I don't know yet. I think it would have to do with your budget and it has to do with what you're doing. The M1 Pro slash Max is a more than capable machine. You can get some really good deals on it. I'd say if you don't need to get the latest and greatest, snag that up because that's a really amazing machine. And I'll, I'm gonna tell you another thing. I'm gonna level with you right now. I'm a software developer. I don't do YouTube full time. Um, the only reason why I really have these machines is because I'm making videos for you guys. Uh, <laughs> I would not upgrade from my M1 Max. I did buy the M1 Max when Apple Silicon transition was going on, and that was a beautiful machine. I loved it. Amazing. I would not have bought the M2 Max, and I probably would not have bought the M3 Max unless I was making videos. And it does. It does a hell of a lot for videos. This is one of the reasons why you see so many benchmarks and so many comparisons on YouTube talking about video rendering. Because for those types of workflows, it's amazing. It's really incredible what these machines can do. I can sit for maybe half an hour waiting for one of the videos I make to render. And that's even on the M2 Max. Uh, so you can imagine what that would have been like on an Intel box. But the M3, I'm gonna, pr I'm probably gonna keep that one because I'm doing video rendering, and that's probably gonna increase my or decrease my time to maybe 20 minutes per video. So that's gonna help me out. But for normal stuff, normal development, nope. <clears throat> all right. Sorry to discourage all of you that are excited about this thing. <clears throat> All right, let's do this. Uh, where are we here? Enable location services? No. Selected time zone? Sure. Continue. Set up later. Don't enable Siri. I can't believe that they don't have any kind of AI built in yet to do uh, in, to do the <laughs> talking instead of the uh, or what, what am I trying to say? Speech to text instead of Siri. Siri has become worse and worse, it seems like, lately. And Whisper is incredible. I use Whisper all the time. That's OpenAI's thing. I actually made a video on this channel showing how to set up Whisper. <clears throat> I think this might be the last step. Good. Now, because this is an M3 Pro, and not just an M3, it does have all the ports, all the same ports of uh, the MacBook Pros that we're used to in the last couple of years. The lower model MacBook Pro, that one does not have all the ports. That one has basically the same ports as a MacBook Air. But I think it's still an upgrade over an M a MacBook Air. Like the M2 model MacBook Airs, even though the new MacBook Pro doesn't have all the same ports, it has all, this, all the new 
box stuff, all the new box elements, like the new screen, uh, the case is bigger, the fan is there, the touchpad. So, all right, let's do this. I'm gonna plug this in and hopefully this will show up. And there it is. Now you can see my new, shiny new MacBook Pro screen. <clears throat> XPS or XRP Revolution. Thank you so much. Hit that like button. Thanks for all you do. SSD test, please. We're gonna do that right now. Let's do it. We're gonna do the SSD test. So I need to get to the App Store and download Black Magic. By the way, there was a little bit of a question going around here, in my mind at least, whether the 512, <clears throat> whether the 512 gigabyte model is gonna have one NAND chip or two NAND chips. I think Apple left it as two NAND chips. We're about to really look into it and find out. <clears throat> so let's do this. This might ask me to log in because I didn't yeah. All right. <laughs> no, I don't think that was the right one. Yeah. Okay. Allow four seventy nine. Three one seven. Oh shit! I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So we're doing the SSD test right now. My dream, me. Thank you, me. Appreciate that. My dream is to see M3 Max Beast running win games on crossover, especially Overwatch Two. I was thinking about trying some games. Not something I do normally. Like I said, Andrew Tsai is the channel to really see that. But if I do make games or if I do play games on some reviews, maybe I'll check something out. I actually don't know any games on Max. So if you know anything besides Overwatch 2, let me know what works well. <clears throat> Somebody says Amorphous Disk Mark is better for SSD benchmarking. Not familiar with that one, but I'll check it out. Okay, here we go. Need to see my screen. Boom. Okay. I think this kind of proves that uh, this is using two NAND chips instead of one. And that's, <laughs> those are some pretty good speeds right there. I think those are higher speeds from what I remember than the dual NAND chip 512s of the previous generation. I'm going to have to go back and uh, check that out. And somebody asked to see the Schwarzenegger. Here's the Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger is going to be doing some testing. Stay tuned. All right. So we got the disk speed out of the way. Does anybody want to see anything else? Like, for example, speedometer. I think we should just do that, right? Let's do that. So I have Safari here, which is going to give very different scores than something like Chrome. And we're going to do speedometer 2.1, which is also different than speedometer 2.0. And also, I got I to gotta issue a little warning here. You might see Xcode benchmark tests out there. And that's a great test. I use it too. But be careful because now Xcode benchmark is different. So um, Max Yeremenko had to change it to support Xcode 15 because it was not compatible. Or the old version was not compatible with Xcode 15. And not only that, he updated it, but he also added a few packages. So the new run times is going to be longer. I can compare it to the machines that I have, like the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, um, but um, I won't be able to compare it to the machines I don't have. So the older videos have some numbers in them. They're going to be a little different, and I'm going to probably have that as a disclaimer. 
So keep an eye out for that. Let's do this. Let's do this speedometer test. Yeah. Start test. <clears throat> it's looking kind of slow out of the gate. I'm used to it flashing much faster. By the way, if anybody has a uh, sensitivity to this kind of stuff, don't look at the screen. Oh, now it's cooking. Now it's going fast. I'm going to run this a couple of times to see the average. Holy shit. Wow. Okay. Uh, notice how the red, the top speed on this is listed as 140. Don't you think they should update that at this point? <laughs> okay. This is 553. That is just ridiculous. What is going on? Oh my God. Okay, this is a this is a single core uh, test, right? I'm sure everybody knows that by now. It's a single core test, and that is insane. That is really nice. Uh, Chrome is probably going to be slower. That's my guess. Some people want to see Chrome. I got to get that installed anyway. So uh, let's get it. <clears throat> wow. Okay, Ram says, what's the configuration of this M Pro again? M3 Pro, good question. This one has, let's, uh, let's go in here. This is the 18 gigabyte. It just doesn't roll off the tongue. I don't know. Like, it's weird to say that. It's an 18 gigabyte RAM machine. Um, it's an M3 Pro. This one has 11 CPU cores. I wonder what that looks like on activity monitor because it was always so symmetrical. It's going to be all weird now. Well, not if you not if you align it like that, I guess. Now it looks okay. How are they going to display it if it's side by side, if it's a grid? I forgot how to switch that. What does this do? Oh, that's just no, never mind. Anyway, 11 cores in this one. Uh, and I think that this one has 14 GPU cores, whereas the uh, the 12 CPU core model has 18 GPU cores. So really weird processor configurations for the M3. Pratik, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Please compare the M2 Pro versus the M3 Pro because P core decreased. Hmm. I've been thinking about that. The P core count decreased. So the performance cores, there's only 11 versus the M2 Pro where there's 12. But uh, it's, a M th it's a three nanometer process now. So who knows, is it gonna be faster or not? It's a good question. Curious myself. Is it gonna warrant the amount of money you're gonna spend extra on an M3 variety though? That's a whole different question. Let's go to speedometer here. 2.1. Boom. I should be in the corner somewhere, shouldn't I? There we go. All right, start. Now let's, let's get all this stuff off the screen first. Not that it really matters, but still. Start test. All right. Marb's music. Could we see Geekbench multi-core to see the effect of the P cores versus E cores? Uh, since this model lost two of the P cores. Uh, this model lost, did it lose two P cores? 
Hmm. Oh, 521. That's still really good. I want to do speedometer again on Safari, but 521 on Chrome is really, really nice. Let's do this. Is it going to be faster this time? Because it started out faster. <clears throat> Geekbench multi-core to see the effect of the P cores versus E cores since this model lost two of the P cores. <clears throat> Whoa, 575. <laughs> All right. I don't have Geekbench installed, but maybe we can do that. Let's do that real quick. Hopefully it'll be quick. I don't know. Downloading Geekbench. I think that you need an account to run it from what I remember. Yaroslav says, never keep opened activity monitor, 30% CPU used by this app. Uh, are you sure about that? <laughs> All right, here we go. Geekbench. I, bet, I guess you guys want to see this stuff. <clears throat> what? Oh, later. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna do a quick Geekbench. Uh, you wanted to see the CPU one, right? Yeah, I think so. I should probably have everything closed down. But let's let's run it. Quit black magic, somebody says. That's a good point. Let's quit everything before we run Geekbench. What else do I have running? Safari. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> it's not a coding not a coding what does that mean not sure Bill says it's not a coding uh, Ram says no activity monitor does not use 30% that's what I thought oh Bill says it's just updated anodizing oh I see okay I'm a, I must have said it was a coding but it's not a coding it's it's uh the process is a little bit different so that's why it doesn't have fingerprints <clears throat> i don't think that's going to affect speedometer uh having uh having black magic closed and black magic wasn't running by the way while i was doing speedometer but we can we can do it again sure I don't want to keep this very long. This is supposed to be an unboxing, a quick unboxing, but we did get to a couple of benchmarks. Thank you so much, folks, for all those that came out. This is amazing. I can't believe there's 1,500 people here. Wow. <laughs> By the way, if you missed the part where I said, put the test down, the tests that you want to see, the developer-oriented tests, put them in the comments. If this video is done and you're watching this later, put those in the comments. I'll read those. That would be appreciated. I already have a bunch written down. Uh, I do have some tests planned, but uh, if you have a vote on a bunch of other ones, let me know. All right. Josh Lopez says Llama. We will be doing Llama. How about that Grok thing? Anybody have access to Grok? I wonder if it's going to be able to do any kind of software stuff, coding or anything like that. 
nobody's talking about that. But if it's getting data from Twitter, you're only going to have bad examples of code, right? <laughs> Not sure. Noise Tin says, Alex, please test Stable Diffusion XL. That might be a good one to test. I was thinking about that. Jose Garcia says, are you planning to sell your M2? Um, maybe, yeah, eventually. Simply says, Baldur's Gate 3, Resident Evil Village, and Lies of, Lies of P? I don't know, I've heard of the other two, but I've never heard of Lies of P. <clears throat> People talk to me like uh, like I'm your dad or something, and I don't know anything about games. Because it's kind of true. I, I actually don't game, but I'd be curious to try it out. I haven't played anything since Xbox 360 Call of Duty. And that came out a while ago. I think it's been like 10 years or 11 years. Bravo 6, thank you so much. I have an M2 Pro and I use Figma with multiple tabs on Figma open. Should I get the M3 Max? Uh, my default, if you're on an M2 series, is probably no. Are you having problems? Are you running into performance issues? Hey, look at this. Geekbench finished, finally, and it's pretty good. Look at that. So in the, initially I wasn't able to find any um, M3 Pro benchmarks up there, but it's good that uh, whoever voted for the M3 Pro now we have that gap filled in. So the multi-core score here is 14, 3, 17. Of course, the single core score is gonna be pretty much the same uh, across all the devices, and we've had those uh, a few days ago. But the multi-core score for this 11-core machine is right there, 14,317. Um, it's pretty good still, I think. Oh, uh, Lars says the uh, the multi-core is a bit worse than the M2 Pro. Do you have the M2 Pro um, score handy? Let me see if I can Google it real quick. Fourteen two thirty one. It's a little bit better. So the score that I found for the M2 Pro, which has 12 cores, is 14,231. The M3 has 11 cores, and this one has 14,317, which is just about the same, a little bit better. So that M3 chip, or the, uh, yeah, the M3 three nanometer process is really offsetting the lack of cores in that situation there. All right, so let's see. Rochelle, thank you so much. Any plans to test Minikube slash Kubernetes? No, I didn't have any plans to do that. But I will check it out now that you mention it. Folks, put your ideas down. This is good stuff. Oh, Lars found a different uh, result for the M2 Pro, which has a result of 14,500 in multi-core. But I would say, okay, yeah, it's a little bit faster for that one, but I guess it's, it's, it's still within the same area. 
and Zygmas found the same uh, result that I did. Did you run the GPU test? No, I didn't. Thank you, Lincoln. Let's do that. Let's do the GPU test. Uh, metal or OpenCL? Any preference, folks? This I like this color. It's not black, but it's... It's dark gray, very dark gray. Okay, we'll start with OpenCL, Apple 3 Pro, run GPU benchmark, there we go. And a lot of people are voting for metal, we'll do that next. All right, so Leonardo says metal, Richard says metal, uh, Gil says OpenCL. Josh says, Neil Patel, no AI test yet. For doing AI benchmarks and tests, I need to do a little bit more setup than just downloading a thing. But uh, I'll get to that in videos upcoming. So make sure you uh, follow the channel. Follow it. That's not the word for YouTube. It's subscribe, right? Subscribe. <laughs> I just hate saying that. Subscribe, subscribe. I say that during my videos all the time. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, is it done? Aha, look at this. That's the OpenCL score. And thank you so much, Helicopter, for showing up during my live stream. Can people hear that, Helicopter? It's uh, pretty obnoxious. So this is the OpenCL score. Let's do the other one, which would be the metal score. I do not have Xcode installed yet, Andrew. So that's, I just unboxed this literally and you know how long Xcode takes to install. Actually, it's not, it's not that long anymore these days, which is not bad, but still it's gonna take a considerable amount of time and then I'll do that a little bit later for y'all <clears throat> so after this um, after we get this metal benchmark for the GPU I think we're gonna call it a day and uh, I really look forward to uh, seeing all of you again in the comments Alex Schwartz showed up welcome Good to see you're still here after all these years. <laughs> uh, Mick says, is it Geekbench 6? Yes, yes it is. And here is the metal score, folks. Norbert says, PyTorch? Uh, yeah, that's on my list of things to do, to check out in my videos. So, Aditya says, Alex, will you do this? Real world should be like Slack, Mail, Docker, Kubernetes, iTerm, Chrome. Seriously? Now you're going to be cutting grass over there? I think my neighbor knows I'm streaming. All right, real world should be uh, Chrome 50 to 80 tabs. Come on, Aditya. That's a lot. Even for me, I have like maybe 30 or 40 tabs open, but come on, 50 to 80? You got it. You got to commit. You got to You got to close those tabs when you're done with them. <laughs> All right. 
How are the temperatures? I don't think we had to worry about temperatures in in a while, but good point. Let's take a look. I'm actually not really doing anything intensive on it, but it's 28 degrees. So it's um, pretty cool. My M1 or M2 Max is at 30 degrees. What the heck? Here we go. 30 degrees. <clears throat> Android build test. Android build test. Going on my list. Actually, it's already on my list, but just in case. What's up with these comments? It just skips around. I'm trying to read these and skips. Any fan noise, Conrad says? There hasn't been any fan noise in a long time. Not unless I'm rendering a video or if I specifically turn on the fan. Even when rendering video, the fan doesn't always turn on. But you know what does have fan noise? Can you see this thing? This thing on my desk? Anybody know what that is? <laughs> Leaf blower GPU needs a fan suppressor, says Doug. <laughs> Who needs fans, fan noise when you got a leaf blower? So shiny tech things is right. This is a mini PC and David uh, Alas Kalaga uh, is also right. Josh Lopez says spaceship. That would be kind of cool. Martin says a mini computer from AliExpress. <laughs> Uh, yeah, close. <clears throat> uh, this is, this is an Ace Magic mini computer, but it has an i9 inside. <clears throat> they shoved an i9 into a tiny little computer. And when this thing is on, you can tell. Anyway, this is not about that, but still, you were asking me about fan noise. I can have like three MacBook Pros up here on my desk, and I have, and there's less fan noise from those than from one of these. I'm, I sometimes hear the noise come on, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? I'm not even using it. And uh, <laughs> then I figure out that it's a thing standing back there. All right, folks. I know a lot of you are wondering what's going on with my other build tests and things like that. And guess what? That stuff is coming and it's coming soon. Xcode tests, um, compilation tests, comparisons with other machines, Docker, and that stuff is coming. But for now, we've unboxed it. We've done some benchmarks. I really appreciate you all. Thank you so much. I will see you in the comment section in the next couple weeks talking about these machines. I will have some other videos in the meantime that are not related to MacBooks. So just be patient and watch those too because they could be interesting. Thanks so much, folks. Schwarzenegger is here, by the way. He's waiting. He's waiting to work. See you all later. Have a good one.